Well, here is today's project, or the start of the day's project anyways. This is truck six. Yesterday they were hauling manure. Had a wheel bearing go out on this right rear axle. And the inner bearing is seized right to the axle tube. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that off in there. However, we're thinking that the axle tube itself has been compromised. So we're gonna end up cutting that off in there. We're gonna see if a new bearing fits on there. I'm assuming it's probably not. And we're more than likely gonna have to get the axle surgeon to come out here to put a new uh, axle end on this axle here. So we've got some work cut out for us here to get that. Well, it's just a simple job to cut that off, but we've got to address the situation and get this so it's somewhat mobile. We might have to just get it so it'll roll get it out the door, get the axle surgeon scheduled, get him here. But it ended up torquing on the drive axle here from where it rubbed on the tube right there. You can see the grooves in it and it got hot. So let's get that cut off. Well, we were able to get the old bearing off. That's right here. I ended up cutting that. We've got that removed. Now I've got a new one just sitting on there. I wanted to check the axle tube because it actually looked better than what I thought it was gonna look like. However, if you look, I've got a black line on the inner part of the bearing where it sets on the axle and it just spins on the axle tube itself and it doesn't matter how tight you get this it's just gonna end up spinning on there so we're gonna go ahead and just throw this back together get this truck outside the shop get an appointment for the axle surgeon he's either gonna come here or we'll take this to stadium international and i would just soon have him come here because i really don't want to drive it any farther than we have to here in order to get this back the way it's supposed to be the abs sensor is broke off of there and it looks like this has been welded or it's been replaced before because you can see a weld in there they'll cut that shrink it pull it out set a new one in there get it straight they've got a special tool that goes on there and then they'll weld the new one into it so we'll slap this back together we've got to replace the hub the race spun inside the hub as well and we'll have to get them lined up to come here and get that fixed well we've got this back together the axle surgeon's going to be here in a couple of weeks He'll go ahead and cut that wheel end off. Well, the new one on there, and then we can put it all back together. But I've got it together now so that we can just get it out of the shop. It's a brand new hub. This hub I had upstairs all covered in dust. Use the original brake drum. Now the old hub, I've got a new race here where the race sets into the hub. That part of the hub is all wore out, and of course the race just wants to spin inside it. So, that hub's no good. So we'll have to get another one, so we have one for a spare. Now I just need to get these wheels on there and roll this out the door, and we can start in on the next project here. just getting back at it we're actually into the following day I didn't film anything yesterday after we got those wheels back on uh, truck six we did some odds and ends work in the shop we've got a lot 
of things to work on here this winter and we just worked on a couple of things yesterday some basic things to kind of keep us going until we get done with uh, shelling corn here I had to bring the big air compressor over here to blow the combine out because I left that out when I got done with it here the other night we got maybe two or three inches of snow from Tuesday night into Wednesday I didn't want to drive the combine down the road well, it had gotten snow and I just didn't want to drive it down the road in the snow so I left it in the field and I ended up combining the last little bit of corn to get the load loaded that I was loading while it was snowing now we have done that in the past and usually what happens is it plugs the screens and the combine usually has to be blown out the combine was slightly froze here this morning but I was able to get it going the shoe augers had some material down in them they didn't want to start but that big air compressor just by blowing warm air on it usually thaws things out enough in order to get it going so I've got that over here up to one of my trucks and put fuel in the combine and then Sarah brought one of the other pickups over and she's putting fuel in the grain buggy tractor here right now so I know I've had some questions here as far as how come you're not filling the bunk and um, the corn that you're putting in the silo is that going to be enough well no the corn that we're putting in the silo that high moisture corn that's going in there will not be enough to uh, feed for the year now uh, most of the corn we've taken in order to Genoa commodities is dry corn and then they will grind that and they will bring it back to us throughout the year so we're basically storing it over there last year when we took dry corn over there we had about 10 months worth of corn that we harvested that ended up going over there uh, the reason why we didn't put high moisture corn in the bulk, well there's a couple of reasons why we didn't do that one we didn't have enough and we didn't want to have a partially filled bulk uh, you know a bulk that only had a little bit in it so we ended up filling that bulk with corn silage uh, we didn't have enough room for fourth cut haylage so we ended up putting fourth cut haylage down in my uncle's bulk he doesn't milk cows anymore so we filled one of his bulks with the tail end of fourth cut so a couple of weeks ago here all of our bulks were full we've got one just about empty that has haylage in it that's a smaller bulk and then we've got another bulk that we put uh, VMR silage in last fall so that we could feed out fermented silage uh, here once we got chopping and once we got uh, filling the bulks with corn silage here this fall so uh, that'll answer those questions um, the yield hasn't been quite what it should be uh, this year with being how dry it has been and we just didn't have enough corn uh, grain corn to uh, make it worthwhile to fill that bulk uh, the bulk we can usually get about 3,000 ton in and if we fill it right up put my moisture corn in the silo that holds a thousand and, and that'll be great up full we, we will be able to get the full thousand ton in the in past years we haven't been able to get that full full because it would settle out and by the time uh, we got moved into the bunk we didn't have time to come back to the silo so we would just put in it whatever it held go from there but um, 
the first couple of years, we fill that we were filling other silos, other upright silos, which we don't fill anymore. And uh, we're able to go, you know, back and forth and top it off. So we're going to keep plugging away. We've got a lot of uh, ice, that's ice chunks and water on top of the bin tarp. So I'm going to let this bin fill right up full so that we can push that water off. I have had a couple of geysers come down over the top of the cab here uh, when I first started. I don't really know how much is left up on there, but we should have a couple more uh, canvas bows going across the uh, bin. A friend of mine's got a brand new uh, S780 and he has a plastic enclosure on his bin and the plastic enclosure has an opening in the middle to where you can get into the bin from either the cab roof or the engine compartment. It's a roll tarp that just rolls, I don't know if it's side to side or if it's front to back, but the plastic structure, the plastic uh, bin cover would be a lot better than the canvas one that I have, but it, uh, at least the, the canvas keeps out 95% of the water anyways. So we'll keep plugging away here. I hope that answered some of the questions that we have had as far as why we're not putting this into a bunk. Another reason why we're not putting it into a bunk is it's, it's too dry uh, for the bunk. For example, this, this here that I'm harvesting right now is 18% moisture and there's not enough moisture in it to make it packy make it tacky in order to pack um, it just it wouldn't wouldn't work all that well in the boat so looks like Sarah's got the grain buggy tractor full of fuel and I am about full of corn here so we'll join back up in a while it's a little muddy here and uh, looks like we're gonna be playing in it so so it looks like we have our first breakdown for 2022. I was, well, I'm only, I'm right across the road from the shop right now, so it could not have happened at a better place. But I had a warning light go off saying my tailings elevator is not running. Tailings elevator was plugged. So I jumped out quick, opened up the flap on the bottom of the elevator to let it clean out because I was on a side hill. And I looked down in the uh, tailings where the auger comes across. The auger slowly started moving, puked out all of the material, but it didn't sound like the chain was running. So there's a slip clutch on the drive side on the right hand side of the combine and it drives the auger that comes across and then that turns your uh, tailings elevator chain so I looked underneath the cover and I could see the chain had popped off I said well that's about ready to have a new chain put on it probably anyways so I shut everything down looked in there and the bearing that's on the left side of the tailings auger that bearing is gone and we're going to have to run up to the shop and uh, get that changed out. So I had to come around uh, outside of the field because I've only made one pass around it. I had to come around the outside of the field not doing anything. So we'll see how long this takes to fix and we'll get that taken care of here. We have two fields on the old side of the road that um, we've got a combine. One's dry and one's not. So we've only got room enough in the silo for maybe five or six loads. That's if we can squeeze them in there. And it looks like that's about what is in that uh, lower field. We've got one in behind the parlor as well. I don't know what the 
moisture is on that one. So we'll get up to the shop, we'll get this tore apart and get it uh, fixed here. So we'll join up with you once we get up to the shop. So while I was offloading onto the truck, I looked up on Deer Parts quick, and that is the bearing I need right there. So as you can see, we are not that far away from the shop, and I need to get into third gear here. So we we're down on that far field, just down in there by the woods. And it was, uh, I've only made one time around that field. And she quit. So I gotta get a hold of Sarah. She's just ducking across the road, taking the long way around. She's probably gonna make a break for the house, or take a break at the house. So I'll join up with you in a minute here. Well, this is the bearing that went right here. I've got the knot removed. It's just a hex shaft, pull the gear off, and then the bearing's just gonna slide out of there. We'll unbolt these bolts here, pull the old bearing uh, cage out of there, and then we'll go ahead and throw the new one in. I did not have a bearing. Sarah has gone to get one right now, and then hopefully, well, should be able to, yeah, I guess we can hold them bolts in right from there. So we'll go ahead and get this tore apart the rest of the way and get the new parts installed into there. All right, Sarah's back here. I did not have a hex bearing that I could put my hands on. That's just gonna slide onto there like that. And we'll get that bolted together and bang bang we'll be in business all right we've got that all back together even sprayed it down with a little white lithium spray got our chain tensioner on there we do have an extra bearing that we could replace the bearing that's on the other side of this shaft but for now we're just going to go ahead and get back going here this uh was a simple, simple breakdown. So, we'll get on it, right? You ready to get back going again? All right. So, tighten this up. And now we can get back on. Jared needs you in there or what? Yeah, so, Alright. Well, I thought we were going to be able to get through the whole season here without any kind of a breakdown with the combine. Now I can't say that. There's two fields here on what we call the old side of the road. There was one other one, I chopped that one. But these two here, the corn didn't quite have enough moisture in it to chop it, so we left it. The, this is the back field. The front field, uh, that corn is a little too dry. I made my pass around that field to check the moisture, and I was on a little bit of a side hill and the tailings elevator buzzer went off and usually that happens when you are that can happen uh, more frequently when you're on a side hill because it's having to push all the material uphill to make it to the tailings elevator to have it go back around the combine again usually what you can do is just get out quick open up the elevator hatch and then the uh, it's a it's a spring-loaded clutch. Once it starts turning easier, 
it'll it'll start to clean it out and it'll jump the gears on it usually and then it slowly cleans itself out and then it gets back going again but I should have looked at it a little better then but then I went another 20 minutes or so and the tailings elevator uh, buzzer went off again and I did the same thing opened the elevator up let it clean out but then it didn't sound like the elevator got back going again so I looked the elevator chain wasn't moving I figured I either spun a sprocket off broke a chain what have you I pulled the cover down that plastic cover that hinges down the drive chain was off I shut the combine down and then I discovered that I had a bearing gone and the rest you've seen me uh, fix there so is that really a breakdown yes was it a huge breakdown by all means no it was the simplest of breakdowns to have it was literally a five minute job I mean that could have turned into something where you know the battery didn't come off the shaft uh, this that and the other thing but it think bang boom it came apart and went right back together the only problem is I didn't have a bearing in stock so we're gonna keep plugging away here we have had snow flurries a couple different times during the day here I thought we were gonna get shut down and we didn't so we're just gonna keep moseying on along here they did break down like I said earlier out to Genoa so we had switched gears from doing uh, dry corn to get back into this wet corn top the silo off and hopefully tomorrow afternoon sometime they get back going again here but at least we were able to stay busy with something so that's going to do it for this video I want to thank you for watching and we'll catch you at the next one